Goldstone, and how it's made. Although the discovery of a 12th century Persian goldstone amulet reveals that earlier artisans had been able to manufacture this spangled glass, the technique of adding mineral oxides into molten glass masses to create a shimmering allure is actually largely credited to 17th century Italian artisans who worked with Murano glass. The Italians referred to goldstone as aventurine glass from the eponym disaventura, which literally means mishap or misadventure. It's also the reason behind the naming of the mineral aventurine, which was allegedly found entirely by accident. There is a baseless myth that goldstone was created by chance when Venetian monks accidentally dropped a jar of copper shavings into a vat of molten glass. However, the actual process of creating goldstone is a little more complex than this story actually allows. Slightly more credible historic accounts state that goldstone was initially manufactured on a commercial scale by a wealthy physicist and astronomer named Vincenzo Miotti, who was born in Murano in 1712. His family were not exactly forthcoming with the recipe for their creation, and kept much of the envied formula under wraps until they ceased their business of artisan glass producing. They are believed to have eventually sold the formula fairly reluctantly in the hopes of repopularising the tradition of manufacturing Venetian glass. For several centuries, Venice had a monopoly on the fabrication of the glittering goldstone, as the manufacturing process proved to be something of a difficulty for others who attempted to replicate the material. Getting the ideal distribution of the copper oxide particles required proprietary knowledge, and not just of the component ingredients, but also of the complicated amounts, techniques and cooling procedures. In 1860, a new formula as well as new techniques were created based on the work of the French chemist Theophile Jus Pelouse, whose name I'm almost certainly mispronouncing, and then, in 1894, a man called Henry Stevens Washington, who thankfully has an easier name to pronounce, wrote a detailed account of the specific chemicals used in the production of goldstone at a glassmaking factory in Maruno, Italy. The specific chemicals included sodium carbonate, lime carbonate, magnesia and iron oxide, and of course particles of copper oxide. It is now produced worldwide, although some purists will claim the original Italian gemstone is the only genuine material. The process required to manufacture goldstone is extremely complex. Goldstone is of course made of crystallised copper in glass. Once the glass is heated to a molten state, granulated copper oxide is then added, and because of the high temperature, it promptly dissolves. Once fully dissolved, the concretion is allowed to cool, and during this cooling process, the copper crystallises, forming octahedral crystals. The size of the crystals can be manipulated by slowing or speeding up this cooling process. The slower it cools, the larger the copper crystals. The main difficulty in the production was maintaining a fairly narrow temperature range which allowed the copper to crystallise without oxidising or remaining in a molten state. The vats containing the molten glass have to be sealed off from the air and carefully kept at a consistent temperature. The batch is then cooled to a single solid mass which is broken out of the sealed vat for shaping. The material with the most consistent distribution of copper crystals within that translucent glass matrix tends to be near the centre of the mass. In the typical orange to brown coloured goldstone that has been conveyed in most of the photographs on this video, the glass is clear, so the colour comes purely from the copper. However, there are also blue, purple and green varieties which can be achieved with coloured or dyed glass, and then additional minerals can also be added. Cobalt is used to impart blue crystals, and chromium to impart green. Manganese can also be substituted for a more silvery flecked appearance. The non-copper goldstones are arguably easier to work with due to the higher melting points and less stringent reductions requirements of manganese and cobalt. Generally, amongst experienced collectors, goldstone has a remarkably bad reputation by virtue of the fact that it's very often sold as being natural, when in actual fact it doesn't occur naturally anywhere. It is, however, a remarkably interesting material in its own right. 
It's certainly a lot older than most people would have assumed before watching this video. And the process to bring it into existence is remarkably cryptic and complicated. If it doesn't bother you that it's not naturally occurring, appreciate it for the qualities that it does have, the virtues of it being interesting, complex and beautiful.